I hope you're all keeping well. It's a blustery, wintry August 21st here on the west coast of Ireland. I hope you're all keeping well and life is good to you. I woke up this morning in a very kind of a spiritual state. Uh, the, probably the most, I, I, it often happens to me at dawn. That I do have a spiritual kind of a, you know, moment. But this morning it was like a turbocharged. So the, the, the downloads were flying as the, the new agers say. So anyway, I hope you're all keeping well. I want to talk about this thing in Hawaii. And, it, you know, I, I, my theories of it are quite different than what other people's theories are. I think, I think it was the Russians that did that. I think that was a warning shot by the Russians. What makes me think that? Well, I'll tell you, initially the strange the strange behaviour of the Biden administration. Have you noticed that? Have you noticed how they're almost like they don't, don't want to think about it or talk about it? Uh, they, they're not really particularly bringing any attention to it. And uh, the second thing is, a few months ago, a spiral was seen above uh, Hawaii in the sky, did you remember that? And it was a real, you know, a real spiral. And so the Russians were doing something up there. And the next thing you know, bam, you have this explosion there, you know, and in, in Russia and, and in, in, in Hawaii, and uh, it burns out a, a, a certain area of a town, of a townland or a, a suburb or whatever. And, I think, yeah, and, and the, what happened was the Clinton Foundation trained lunatics in mainstream journalist, journalism told everybody, because Hillary Clinton told them to say this, that Russia was on its last legs, its military was weak, its economy was on the verge of collapse, and Putin was on the verge of being overthrown. And it was only a matter of time, a formality, that Zelensky would defeat the Russians. It's absolute insanity when you think about it. You know, the poorest country in Europe is going to take on a superpower like Russia and beat them. Not on, on, on top of that, what we've discovered is that the Russians are not, they're far from backward. They have, they seem to have very good electronics and surveillance systems. They have a keen and, you know, we're eager to fight military. They have tremendous aircraft and tanks and everything else. The, the hypersonic missiles which NATO doesn't have and uh, and that's what I think caused the fire in Hawaii the hypersonic missiles that, that NATO doesn't have and they, they, uh, they've got they're not afraid they're not they're not scared they're not worried they've also don't they also have a military where the generals aren't wearing high heels and lipstick you know this is another reason why the Biden administration is imploding they made the military go weak and through the whole thing of making them go, you know, tranny. And so you had like generals wearing makeup and high heels and all this kind of thing. And you have diversity quotas, you know, you don't, they don't put in the best people, they put in, they have to have the quotas. And so the Russia knows that the United States is weak as anything. Not that it doesn't have the technology in the military, but the, 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 it, and I'm not, I'm not putting down American, ordinary American service men and women. Who are not the freaks? I'm putting that. I'm putting down who's running the military there, and it's it's fellows with lipstick and high heels, and uh, Chelsea, Chelsea, Chelsea Manning's alchemical vessel has come to pass, has come into fruition, but that was a warning shot by Putin. I'm I, I, I'm nearly convinced of it. And people now the truthers are all they're doing their usual thing. They're talking about it's oh it's directed energy weapons. I've seen no proof of the existence of, of direct energy weapons. None. Sure, there's rail guns, you know, and rail cannons. But they require huge infrastructure behind them to fire them. You know, you can't... You can't if this thing was fired from the air, it, there'd be no aircraft big enough to have a rail gun on, on it. So, at that, that size, that accuracy. So that's nonsense. The, the whole directed energy weapons thing was a mythology created by that, by that very strange person, Dr. Judy Wood. 
and her whole dustification thing that overcomplicated 9-11 on purpose, just like the architects and engineers overcomplicate 9-11 on purpose. And they had all this thing of no planes and direct energy weapons. All they needed was planted explosives and maybe rockets, uh, bunker buster bombs, rockets from the F-16s that were flying around Norm Manhattan. In fact, I'd say that's how Building 7 came down. Building 7 came down exactly the way I've seen videos of um, towers being, large buildings being brought down the Middle East by these bunker bombs. These, the, what the, the rockets that simultaneously fire into the basement. And what they basically do is they go into the basement and they shatter everything. And they scramble up the, uh, the foundations so the building just goes down on, into its own footprint. And so that's uh, what happened. That, that's actually building seven is the one that sets the alarm bells off about something dodgy about 9-11 because the BBC got the mem got the press release too soon. And she said the building had collapsed while it was right behind her. That was that was it. That was the gods working in the favor of decent people. And uh, that the press release, they got too excited and put the press, the, they lost their coordination and put the press release out too soon. Now, I don't know for sure what happened in 9-11, but you don't need direct energy weapons. You can plant bombs in buildings. You can have everything. And the planes would have been enough to start fires, but they wouldn't have taken down the building. Especially the, the, the first tower that was hit was the last one to go down, the North Tower. And there's a video was... Re see, it's so bizarre how all these years later, we're now getting to see videos of the collapses that we were not, we were not allowed to see or weren't shown back in the day when it was going on but there's one video i saw and i was like where where the hell has this been all these years and it shows how little of the top of the north tower was actually on fire like it was one seventh of the north tower brought down six sevenths of the building below it that's completely impossible that there isn't that would just what would normally happen with that collapse on the top would have fell onto itself and tumbled down the side like that and the the, the, the other six sevenths of the building would have remained intact but it went those all the way down from, and if that you know that that's i don't know how they did it but you don't need direct energy weapons to do that you know this and how do you get a direct how do you how do you power it you know a mag a magic truth fluid you know this is what I always I used to watch that Judy Woods things, and she said dustification and all this something that turns into dust. You know, it's power, it, 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 direct energy weapons exist as handguns and things like that. You okay, and they're they're they're, they're but the, the thing is like huge. It's and it's like and it makes a little flame that burns a leaf. To, to there's no power source you could get into the air that could do that. Not on a sat. Not on a, not on an orbital space station. Not on a plane. The amount, it'd be colossal amounts of power needed to do something like that. You're talking about a nuclear power plant, a big one, flying in the sky. So that's that's why I've never, I've never bought into the direct energy thing. Also, well, how did they burn down the Hawaii? The same way they burn down these places in countries where you have gang wars like Portugal over cork farms or Greece over olive farms or Turkey or Spain. They set fire for them, but with, with accelerants. All I have to do is go in there with petrol, acetone or butane and the thing will go up in flame spread out spray it all over the place at night set fire to it and it'll, it'll go up like a roman candle you don't need a direct energy to start a fire but that one there was no signs of arson that's what makes the one in, that's the makes the one in um uh, in hawaii very suspicious i'd say it was a russian hypersonic missile i'd nearly bet money on it first they gave them the warning signal with the spiral in the sky over hawaii and it was in the north russia and also, um, do you remember the, when Biden, when the Biden administration took out the Nord Stream pipeline, they honestly didn't expect the retaliation. And they didn't. And just like they were, they were completely terrified. They're terrified of Russia. It's, it's, the Ukraine war has become a complete disaster for them. That's why you had that hysterical letter a memo sent out by Nathaniel Rothschild to all the politicians saying you better win this Russian war or our new world order is finished you know you better win it you know like the bank the, as usual the bankers telling the the, the politicians giving the politicians their orders and uh, you know so I think NATO is, is, is bogged down in Russia Zelensky is finished and Russia has never been more powerful or stronger 
never more powerful or stronger. And you still have, and, and that, that, remember that thing they had, a, there was a coup against him? Remember that? The, the Western media went, there was, there was a coup against Putin. It was literally a guy produ- sent a press release off a fax machine. That was the coup. A guy sent a press release on a fax machine. And the, and the media was like, oh, well, Putin will be disposed tonight by the military. And he said, there was even an article in Forbes the other day that was absolutely hysterical. And it was like you're saying that like Russia is dead as a country, you know, all because of the war. No, but I think I think that's what that was. I think I think I, I nearly bet money now that that was a, a Russian a Russian uh, hypersonic missile. Definitely, and it was just saying, and it was symbolic too. Think about it, you know, per- Pearl Harbor too. Mm. And and they know the United States is weak. It has a weak leadership. Look look at the people they have that like in the press conferences and you know generals with like makeup and. High heels. They've never been more vulnerable, ever. And there must be terrible demoralization amongst the regular armed forces there over this. But uh, also, something happened a few weeks ago. On, on I, You know, I, I like trains, so I, I, I watched the train groups. And the tr- lots of the train groups in America were posting videos of huge movements of troops up into Alaska on trains. And, tr- you know, they were showing the Alaska Railroad pulling up huge amounts of tanks armored cars and all that kind of you know all the kit all the gear big time military gear up into alaska which is next to russia so siberia so this could have been this is this is that kind of like dick waving stage of things and i think i think the biden administration are absolutely in shock and they they know who did it they know who did it i mean these are fuckers who couldn't even stop a chinese balloon that was flowing over america couldn't even touch it didn't, didn't know what to do about it. Oh, there's a balloon in the sky. Oh. So what chance would they have against a hypersonic missile? I mean, I feel sorry for America right now. You have an administration that is, well, we've got, we got a terrible one in our, but and, and the stakes are so much more higher in the USA. Uh, the rat backed into a corner mentality. It's quite frightening. Quite, It's quite worrying. But yeah, you don't need direct energy weapons. It's, you know, Judy Woods bullshit. You don't need any of that stuff. Because uh, it doesn't anyway. That's I'm, again. I, if you can show me proof of the right, and don't show me a video that's obviously CGI or anything like that, or someone taught me about something, a plan or a patent from 1954. Show me proof of an actual energy weapon that's capable of like shooting at from a distance. They don't exist. They don't. They're theoretical. Uh, I have well, maybe they do exist, but I haven't seen any proof of any of them. And even if they did exist, I haven't got a clue how you would power them. Not to make them mob, uh, not power them enough to make them mobile. But anyway, so that's that's a big that's a big deal. That that's a big deal, and uh, I, I do think that it's that the the Biden administration are very content with uh, truthers going on about direct energy and all this kind of thing and stuff like burning it, you know. And there's all kind of nonsense I've seen. Oh, they, they didn't burn down a celebrities' houses. It's just like a, a small square. But there's houses on either side and all around. They didn't get touched. Because they weren't in the area of ignition, that happens. That happens with fires all the time, and uh, you know they're going to level it and make a fifteen-minute start city. There's only a small area has been burned, relatively, and it's, it's not ideal for making a smart city. But having said that, I mean you know the, the millionaires are going to scoop it up because they're scumbags anyway, and buy the breachfront property. That's another thing too. I was thinking the other day, the whole. You know the whole global warming thing about rising sea levels? That's a Ponzi scheme for billionaires to buy a property on the coast cheap. This is why Obama, Al Gore, the all, the Clintons, all of them buy oceanfront property in places like Florida. They know the sea levels have never risen. Well, they're not rising. They haven't risen in the last hundreds and hundreds of years. They're not going to rise, and that's why they. It's a Ponzi scheme. The whole thing, rising sea levels. It's a Ponzi scheme for corporations and billionaires to buy up uh, expensive coastal areas for themselves. That's all that is. It's a big scam, a big ass scam. And the proof in the pudding is: look at all the people who promoted global warming, buying beachfront property. You know, actions speak louder than words. That's just a big Ponzi. It's a, a bit like futures trading almost. That's what that was. Well, yeah, they, that whole thing of like, can't live near the coast, we'll be flooded. Uh, it's not been no problem for all the billionaires and politicians who are buying coast, 
coastal property. Yeah, so that's it. What a what a world we live in, huh? What a world. Speaking of water, there's these chaps in Ireland who are sailing. They're gone on a boat in the Shannon River, and they've just, they've gone. They're going up the Shannon River uh, from. I guess from Limerick all the way up to whatever the Shannon ends up in County Cavan somewhere, and and it's stopping in the towns along the way, and libraries, the libraries and bookshops, to inform people. They're not really protesting. It's very low key actually, about uh, these books teaching kids how to, little kids how to fist and fuck and things like that, and give blow jobs and all that stuff. Oh my God. Now my, my, you know, I, I, you know me. I'm not a left wing. I'm not a right wing. I'm an, I'm an anarchist. And I see my job to when the thing. If it goes too far to the left, we swing it back to the middle. If it goes too far to the right, we swing it back to the middle. You know, I'm a big one for equilibrium and the center path and all that. My attitude towards this book is it really should be up to parents to, you know, have stewardship over the consciousness of their own children. It shouldn't be up to politicians and, you know, weirdos with weirdos and, you know, fellas in frocks deciding that the kids should read these books or not. It should be up to the parents. So it should be interesting what happens in next month when the school term opens again and this this transgender, uh, you know, hypersexualization thing kicks off in the schools that's been introduced. Now, I, I, was, I was going to talk about it last week, but I got cut off or I changed subject. But there was, a, in the boxing stadium in Dublin, in Dublin 3,000 people showed up to protest, to, uh, to, 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 you know, to, to see a, t a presentation about the school book. And were very concerned about it and very disgusted. The lefties would have been horrified if they had a went there. Because there was loads of Muslims and, and African people and Eastern Europeans who were disgusted by it. The lefties would have hated that because they, they thought it would be all Irish gammons. But it wasn't. It was like, there was, I'd say a good quarter of the audience were, were people who were not ethnically Irish. And that makes sense because I used to live where that, st where that stadium is on the South Circular Road. And they filled the place out. It was like 3,000 plus people. And I used to be on the, I used to be, I used to live down the road from that. I used to rent a flat on that South Circular Road. And that area is very heavily Muslim. And uh, there was lots of, and there lots of Muslims living around there. It's actually, it's basically a Muslim area. There's a mosque next door. And uh, I was one of the few, like, white men on the street. And uh, I never had any problem or any bother. I'm just, I'm not like that. I, I get on with everybody. But, um... I'm not surprised they're they're protesting. I'm not surprised, you know, a mosque and an Islamic school next door. They would, of course, they would have been there, but that's going to be very interesting when that kicks off. Now these guys are traveling up and down the Shannon, and they come across as really likable and nice guys. They're, they're Christian. Hey, <coughs> I don't judge people for their for their religion once I'm not showing them down my throat, but um, and they're entitled, you know, but they seem very good natured and very likable and. Um, there's something, there's something beautiful about them using the water, uh, being on the boat. It's almost like magical, you know, the way they, they, they sail into a town and they tell people about the, this book, these books that are, that are aimed at children, the sexualized children, and then they leave um, by boat. There's something kind of like almost monkish or pilgrimage, like a kind of about it. There's something in the Shannon too, you know, the goddess Shiona, you know, the... the or Shiana, however you want to pronounce it. There's that element of it too, you know, that she's probably after, she's probably the third most powerful goddess in Ireland, pagan goddess, after Eru, uh, the Boand, and then Shiana. And, uh, yeah, there's something magical about that. Uh, uh, those guys, that they they come across really well. They're, they're actually winning a lot of hearts just by their, their calm, friendly demeanour. I don't know anything about them, but uh, I have to say that they're, they're, they're doing it right, whatever they're doing. And um, again, it shouldn't be up to people telling someone that the, the kids should, should or shouldn't read this book. It should be up to the parents. 
<coughs> being the ultimate arbiters, but they're obsessed with, se- you know, the left are obsessed with sexualizing children. They're obsessed with all. See, what happened with the left was why they're all woke and obsessed with sex and stuff like that and trannies and all that stuff is because the left, the trade union, the left in this country and the UK and probably in America too, represented the trade unions, you know, the trade unions, what they call blue collar in America, working class people here. And they represent, and when, and when when they moved all the factories to China, what was the left going to do? So they had to invent, they had to invent the new constituency. And what was the constituency? Well, you know, pride. That was the constituency that they invent, and immigrants. You know, that that was their new constituency, because they, but you know, uh, they betrayed the working class, the unions, big time. Because in Ireland, especially, the the unions only care about civil servants and stuff like that. But uh, in England, there was different. Arthur Scargill and the miners' strike that was pretty nasty. Uh, they stalked the British Thatcher and the Conservative government. You see, this is when the right were scumbags in, in out of control, and I would have been against the right back then. That stockpiled huge amounts of coal and oil. Uh, so if the migrant miners went on strike. There was tons of fuel. There was no fuel shortage, so people wouldn't be affected. And they wouldn't have sympathy for the the miners. If this is the second time it happened, and um, so I mean that's what a miner strike was such a horrible device of its issue in England. And I, I don't think English culture has ever recovered from the miner strike. You go to the north of England, you can see it. They've never. It's never in the same way Northern Ireland hasn't recovered from the troubles. Though you know the troubles in North Ireland were much much more violent and worse than anything that happened in the miner strike. That was peanuts, but still, it destroyed families. Families turned again, and still they won't talk to each other. You know, and it was you know, and Arthur Scargill. A lot of people put Arthur Scargill down, but he was actually he genuinely the National Mine Workers Union leader. He genuinely cared about his people, and uh, he 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 saw how treacherous this alliance between government and trade unions can be in screwing the working class and he's i don't know he's still alive but now he looks at a country where the 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 the, the constituency that he would have represented the left are trying to get you know fellas and frocks into little girls bathrooms you know that's because they 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 they, they killed the working class off by moving all the factories overseas and, and shutting down mines and steel mills and all that kind of thing it was a kind of a genocide when you think about it that's why the left in Ireland, the left, the left activists in Ireland, they're all from the landed gentry, or all from the, uh, the uh, you know, the Irish aristocracy, the establishment, you know, the ones screaming far right, far right, you know, the posh accents. So in Ireland, there's a thing going on too as well, with uh, Ryan Tuberty, a TV, a shit TV presenter, who lost his job. Uh, uh, because he was, I don't know what, it, what the story was there, but apparently he, he's no talent or anything like that. But uh, the, 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 the mediocrity in Ireland is, inc- is, su- is such such that the more mediocre you are, the more they care about you. You know, I saw this thing down in Cork. They have this thing called the, the Cork Podcast Festival. And it's like they're going to have a handful of, like, normies who have a podcast and, like, 20 listeners each or something and treat them like celebrities and no one's interested. And then you have someone like me who gets between ten to 20,000 per v- vlog on here. And I wouldn't even get a look in. Why? Because I'm not establishment. I wouldn't sit there going Leo's alleged and all this kind of stuff. Oh, speaking of which, uh, don't forget, speaking of legends, don't forget tomorrow night, uh, Hocus Focus on BR313. So that's all I have to say, really. Uh, summation... I think Russians, the Russians attacked Hawaii. Uh, I, I like those guys who were sailing up and down the Shannon, uh, stopping the nonsense from getting their hands on Kitty's libraries and books and keys. And, uh, you know, that the, 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 everything else is just enjoy your life. You know, don't worry about it. I, uh, this, I'll talk about in depth. This is, this is Ragnarok now, you know. This is it. You know, the Midgard Serpent is splashing. But we know, we understand, because we are the tribe, and we will persevere. Sanguine gnosis, love you bastards, every last one of you.